May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Something that is likely to be on everyone's mind this morning is the bitter cold weather we've been experiencing over the past few days. We were warned through the media and by word of mouth that the temperatures were going to plummet. But one is never really sure if they are actually as prepared as they need to be. And what about the folks who don't have the resources or the wherewithal to prepare for such extreme weather? How are they supposed to manage or take care of themselves? Extreme weather alerts and banners, citywide text messaging systems and robocalls all showed up on my cell phone these past 72 hours, urging me to check on my neighbors, the elderly, homeless people, and pets. I even received a telephone call from a member of this congregation from thousands of miles away, desperately wanting to save the lives of his friends here in Boston who live outdoors. Extreme temperatures are a matter of life and death, they said and members of this community know that all too well. Members of the MANA community and people of this congregation, including myself, know the terrible suffering that our siblings in Christ may be experiencing this weekend, especially those who are living outside, those who are living in their car, those who can't afford to pay for their heat, and anyone for whom their addiction or mental illness is putting them at a greater risk of illness or death due to these extreme temperatures. If you will indulge me, I would like to take a moment to pause and pray for the suffering of souls. God be with you. Holy One and healer of all suffering souls, we beseech you to be present to anyone who is suffering in this moment from extreme weather conditions, fear and anxiety, mental illness or addiction, violence of any kind, poverty of any kind, or catastrophic loneliness. We pray for your healing grace in all situations of painful suffering. We seek repentance for anything that we have been complicit in that has contributed to the suffering of others. And we ask that you help us to become repairers of the breach and restorers of the streets we live in to ease that suffering. Guided by your spirit, help us to offer hospitality and warmth to the best of our ability so that we may care for your most vulnerable children by way of love. Amen. It's hard to feel much like the salt of the earth and the light of the world when we experience the helplessness of not being able to keep ourselves or others safe from harm whether it be the extreme weather temperatures, violence that is seemingly spiraling out of control in our midst, or the increasing divisiveness in our nation, which brings about more violence. Sometimes I feel so overwhelmed by the state of the world that my helplessness has the potential to turn into hopelessness. I wonder if some of the disciples gathering around Jesus the day he preached the Sermon on the Mount felt pretty helpless themselves. Remember that this raggedy group of people called forth by Jesus were tax collectors and sinners, people who were oppressed and others who were complicit in oppressing others. They too were subjected to oppressive systems and surrounded by violence from Roman rulers and divisiveness from the religious elite. Perhaps individually, they felt undervalued, unsafe, and without the gifts and charisms needed to bring about the kingdom of God. But Jesus says, no, no, that isn't true. Jesus tells them, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are meek and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, and the peacemakers. And then he goes on to say, you are the salt of the earth. The whole earth, 
not your local community, city, or state, the whole earth. You are the light of the world, the whole wide world. You, my friends, have much to offer because you are a child of God who has already been blessed with everything you need to be salt and light in the world. Everything you need. The key is to empower you to recognize your own belovedness, which can be a powerful catalyst to activate the spark already within you, the Christ light that never burns out. Or the salt, which is preserved within your soul by Christ and through Christ, that just waits to be added to that which needs your saltiness to create change. This is something we strongly believe in at NANA. We believe that everyone, despite the challenges of homelessness, mental illness, or addiction, that everyone has a gift they bring to the community. Overtly, these gifts are manifested through poetry, prose, and reportage by the Black Seed writers, by the colorful artwork created with chalk, paint, and even the innards of hand warmers, by singing and dancing, percussion accompaniment, and reflections during open mic, by theological reflections on Holy Scripture, prayers offered in setting up the altar, and by feeding hungry people, offering snacks and meals, hot drinks and cold drinks, and sometimes a much needed peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Covertly, these gifts are manifested through acts of friendship and loving gestures, like quietly offering an extra pair of shoes to another community member that has none, by offering a cigarette to someone who is escalating and needs to take a break outside to push pause on whatever the situation might be, by comforting one another during times of crisis or deep sorrow. I've witnessed all those things and more at Manna and here on Sunday morning with this congregation, which is why I know to the core of my being that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, just like Jesus proclaimed. And we need each other to activate those gifts and put them into motion here in this space and beyond our doors. What I love about today's lectionary is that I think it offers something for all of us, housed or unhoused, resourced or under-resourced, churched or unchurched. The prophet Isaiah says, share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do these things, remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, and offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted. Your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like a noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. And you shall be called repairers of the breach and the restorer of streets you live in. So beautiful. Such a good message, an important message for all of us, especially on this bitter cold winter day when we know many are suffering indoors and out. The cathedral is a place that invites others in and offers sustenance for our bellies, clothing for those not properly clothed, 
prayer and worship to nourish our spirits. And we do a decent job of it, all in the name of our brother and friend Jesus. And we are not yet like a watered garden whose waters will never fail. What I mean to say is that Jesus' words that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world are encouraging and empowering and an invitation, I think, to discern Isaiah's prophecy of to what end are we feeding others, clothing the naked, and loosening the bonds of injustice. These are tough times. These are lean times. They are. But I think we're on the right path. Don't you? Collectively, as the body of Christ, we must heed the call that each and every one of us is salt and light. And in communion with one another, we can live into Isaiah's prophecy and loose the yoke of our, on our siblings in Christ. The path that God chooses is not to let people go hungry and thirsty live unsheltered and frightened for their safety, but to light each other's way and provide the right catalyst, the saltiness, to collectively discern a way forward in tough times. God is already there. It's our job to participate in God's dream in an embodied way, following in the teachings of Jesus and the prophets before him. It's living into the now, and not yet. The Beatitudes are Jesus' vision for beloved community, and each of us has a place in it. No one person can bring about the kingdom of God. There will be many, many challenges along the way, hard times, but it will be life-giving if we do it together. The Lord will be our rear guard and when we cry out for help, God will say, here I am. Amen.